Welcome to the 307th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Rutherford. Stay tuned for my interview with Kwame Mbalye, author of the New York Times bestselling novel, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. Kwame's newest novel, Tristan Strong Destroys the World, has just been published. Stay tuned for the interview. If you're new to audiobooks, they're the perfect way to get more books into your busy life. Listen to audiobooks during your commute, while doing chores, walking the dog, or just relaxing at home. All you need is a smartphone and the free Libro.fm app. If you already love audiobooks and don't know what to listen to next, check out recommendations and curated lists from people who know audiobooks best, your local bookseller. Reading and Writing Podcast Special Offer. Get two audiobooks for the price of one with your first month of membership with code RWPODCAST. That's code RWPODCAST for two audiobooks for the price of one for your first month of membership at Libro.fm. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Kwame Mbalia author of the new novel, Tristan Strong Destroys the World. The book is the second in the Tristan Strong trilogy. The first book in the series, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, was a New York Times bestseller and received the Coretta Scott King Honor Award. Kwame, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Sure. Well, if someone hasn't heard about your novel, Tristan Strong Destroys the World yet, how would you describe the novel? Uh, Tristan Strong Destroys the World continues the adventures of our middle grade African-American hero, Tristan Strong, um, who has discovered that he has uh, magical powers. And he has also discovered a world in which African-American folk tales and folk heroes and West African gods coexist. And he is learning, he's exploring, and in book two, we find another villain that he has to defeat. And so do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to write the Tristan Strong trilogy? Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, Tristan Strong, uh, I've always wanted to write a story that involved the characters that I grew up reading and and listening to. Um, John Henry, Burr Rabbit, Burr Fox, Burr Bear... Uh, uh, Anansi, Nyame, the Sky God. I, I grew up listening and reading these stories, and I always wanted to bring them forward to a new generation. Um, and so, the the Tristan Strong was my my attempt to bring it into a contemporary setting, while also exploring you know different emotions and and feelings that you know, I don't know if you remember, but I barely remember, uh, and, and that we experience in middle school, which is this transformative period of time where we're growing and our awareness of where we fit into the world is expanding. So that's, you know, that that's really where the impetus for this story came from. Sure. And so what are your earliest memories of writing your own fiction? <laughs> that my fiction was very bad. I think that was my, that's my earliest memory. Um, <laughs> But uh, writing, you know, was always a a personal uh, endeavor for me. I didn't actually think about becoming an author, a published author, until about five or six years ago. Uh, I've always written, though. I was, I've, you know, from the age of eight or nine, I um I would write stories, and those stories would tackle emotions and feelings that I didn't feel comfortable expressing out loud. But if you put it into a story with a different character and you allow them to interrogate what they're feeling and dealing with, that was my form of expression. So I've always been a writer. It's only really recently that I thought about becoming an author. And so what did happen five or six years ago that led you to wanting to become a published author? Well, I joined, uh, uh, you know, I was on the, the, um, social media site Reddit where I browsed occasionally. And there was a subreddit called write, the writing subreddit. And there was a call put out and they were like, Hey, you know, does anyone want to get together and form an online writing group? We'll write, we'll submit our stories and we'll kind of critique each other so that we can get better at this. And I was like, Hey, why not? Um, and so I joined. And one of the things we did is we had little writing tournaments where we would submit little stories 
and we would have judges of our peers who would rank them. Um, and I, so I lost in the opening round of this little writing tournament. But I remember specifically one of the judges DM'd me privately and said, you are a really good writer. Have you ever thought about publishing, you know, uh, uh, your books? I could see myself picking up one of your books. And that little bit of encouragement went a long way. It was really the motivation for me to really think about, hey, maybe I can. Maybe I can do this uh, and, and become an author. That's great. I've interviewed many authors, almost 300, and I think you're the first person to mention Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still an active Reddit user? Um, I, unfor- I don't know. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on, on how you look at it, my uh, social media obsession has switched to Twitter, and that's where I spend the bulk of my time these days. There you go. Well, did you research African-American folktales when you were working on these Tristan Strong novels? Absolutely. Um, and And some of that research was just recalling some of the stories that I heard as a child uh, that I could remember listening to or reading. And then some of it was going off to find new stories or new versions of those tales with those same characters. Um, I would look for, you know, the, the author Henry Louis Gates Jr. and Zora Neale Hurston, who were both oral historians. They would travel around and collect folk tales and stories of African-American, you know, uh, uh, culture and write them down for other readers. Um, I'm looking at a book right now on my desk. Uh, it is by another oral historian, uh, Virginia Hamilton, and the book is called Her Stories. It's a, a, a collection of African-American folk tales and fairy tales, but they're about the goddesses and the folk heroines, which I really wanted to do, you know, make a more concerted effort of putting into book two. And so how did you get connected with Rick Reardon and his imprint? Uh, Rick, first of all, Rick is fantastic. Rick is uh, one of my favorite authors. Um, his book, uh, Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief, is one of my favorite books. I cannot tell you how many copies I own or how many times I've read it. Um, but he, he uh, and Disney partnered to come up with the Rick Riordan imprint. And they were putting out a call. You know, they published diverse cultural mythology stories. And they were put, they put out a call for African-American storytellers. And I, you know what? I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try. Uh, and Because something I tell young writers all the time is that they will meet gatekeepers, people who will limit or prevent or give access to their work moving forward in the publish, in publishing industry. But the very first gatekeeper you'll meet will be yourself. So never self-reject, never convince yourself to not submit something because you want other people to say no or yes. Don't limit your own self. So I submitted, and fortunately, they loved it. That's great. Well, there's a current conversation in publishing and the world at large, obviously, in uh, about offering diverse characters and works of fiction and people of color that reflect the reading public. Were you thinking about those issues when you were working on Tristan Strong? Um. They were definitely in the back of my mind, but I think what I was most focused on was telling, you know, a good story uh, because in my opinion, it is not incumbent upon necessarily the writer trying to, you know, put more diverse uh, cultural stories out into the world, but it's more, the onus is more on publishing to, to, to find and search out and, and boost those stories. So I wanted to tell a good tale. I wanted to tell a good fantasy adventure starring this, you know, this middle school boy, um, who's African American and, and some of the adventures that he goes on. And so what was your creative process when you wrote the first two Tristan Strong novels? Did you create an outline for the entire trilogy or was it a more organic process? All right, all right, Jeff. I'm I'm going to be honest with you here, okay? The very the very first thing I did is I I poured myself the largest cup of coffee um, <laughs> that you can probably imagine. Uh, that's how I start all my my writing days. Um, but I am more of an organic writer, you know. I I know where I want the story to go. I know the characters that I want, you know, uh, Tristan to meet. Um, but I I am 
more interested in how the dialogue happens organically on the page. You know, I'm not exactly sure what sort of subplots might arise or what little, you know, uh, um, tiny chapter villains Tristan might encounter. So, you know, I, I don't want to do a disservice to other plotters and outliners out there by saying I did. You know, I may have had a couple of sentences telling me, trying to point me in the right direction. <laughs> but, it, you know, my I, I really wrote organically. And that just meant, you know, I had to do a, a little bit more on the back end with my revisions. That's great. Well, given your success to date, what writing advice would you offer for those who are writing their own stories and novels? I would say um, something, you know, that I learned that that uh, uh, I've incorporated into my own writing. And this is just, you know, um, um, a, a physical trick, you know, a way to get yourself over the hurdle of getting those first few sentences down when you're starting a new writing session is that whenever you end the previous writing session, end it in the middle of a sentence, in the middle of a paragraph. Because what will happen is, is you'll trick your brain. You'll go back and you'll, you'll, you know, all right, where did I leave off? And you'll read that sentence and you're like, oh, well, I know how to end the sentence. And boom, you're writing. You know, so much time is spent staring at the blank page or trying to figure out how to start. If we can get over that hurdle of figuring out how to start, we spend way more time writing and less time, if you're me, browsing Twitter, waiting for the ideas to strike. Are, are you working on another novel now? I am working on the third and final uh, entry into the series, the, the trilogy. Um, currently untitled, uh, but I'm really excited about it. I, I'm really enthused with uh, you know where Tristan is going on his journey. Um, if in book one we are dealing with you know the the physical manifestation of of the mid-Atlantic slave trade. And in book two, we are dealing with the idea of trauma and how it manifests itself. In book three, we are dealing with another period in time in African-American history that I'm also fascinated by. And that is that idea of the great migration, you know, the exodus of, of African-Americans from the South towards, you know, West and up North looking for more opportunities. I'm really, really excited for readers to to see and experience this journey that Tristan goes on. And so have you started thinking beyond the trilogy of, of what you might be interested in writing next? Yeah, I, I have several, several books that are, um, have been announced um, as, as science fiction and an anthology that I'm editing. Um, I think writers, we also, we, we kind of have to kind of think of head, think towards the next story, just in the way that the industry works. Um, there, the problem with me, Jeff, is that I have way too many ideas and I have to kind of <laughs> discipline myself to, to, you know, limit to, to one or two particular ones. So what fiction or nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoyed? Oh, wow. Um, well, the sequel to, uh, the Newbery award winning and Coretta Scott King award winning, um, graphic novelist, uh, Jerry Craft. Uh, the sequel to his book, New Kid, came out ye- yesterday as well, um, Class Act. And so I am a big fan of graphic novels, and I love Jerry's work. So I actually reread New Kid, um, fell in love with the story and the characters all over again. And I'm really excited about diving into Class Act. That's great. Well, where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you and your Tristan Strong novels? You can visit me at my website, which is kwamiambalia.com. That's my first name and my last name, dot com, um, where you'll learn more about the books that are here, uh, links to buy them. Please support your local independent bookstores. Uh, and you can also follow me on Twitter. That's at K-S-E-K-O-U-M on Twitter. And like I said, you will find me there because I spend way too much time there. Great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Kwame Mbalye, author of the new novel, Tristan Strong Destroys the World. The novel is on sale now, so go buy a copy. And Kwame, thanks for doing this interview. Jeff, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.